Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I wanted to answer the question regarding can you swing trade forex successfully without fundamental or risk sentiment analysis? And the answer that typically follows that <coughs> from technical analysis traders um, is that all you got to do is follow the trend, right? So higher highs, higher lows in combination with... Um, with trend indicators, right? So it's just a case of PPC, you know, uh, something like this occur, higher, high, higher, low, like that, right? And you've seen this happen. All you got to do is get in on a, um, a pullback, right? And then that's really what you're looking to do. And as long as whatever said indicator is, you know, whether it's a moving average, whether it's some sort of Elliott wave, you know, uh, you know, ABCD wave or one, two, three, four, five, then um, that's pretty much all you need to do. But I would then ask the question, well, how do you know if the trend is likely to continue? Because, you know, trends don't continue, for, continue forever, right? You might see the trend, and what happens is, with, especially with swing trading, um, you know, on, on something like a daily time frame chart and looking out, traders will see the trend after it's made uh, maybe about you know maybe a 500 600 800 pip move and then all of a sudden then they want to start jumping in on the pullback right and prices might pull back but you know how are you going to you know know whether that's likely to continue yeah likely to continue because ultimately that's what you're what you're gambling on and um also how do you know whether uh, price is pulling back or if it's actually the beginning of a, uh, a reversal right because you have situations where you can have um, you know pullbacks complex pullbacks if you want to call it complex pullback but a pullback that might look something like this and it might bounce off of there and then maybe you know come down to maybe something like this maybe a demand zone down there and then all of a sudden we made lower highs, lower lows. Traders might think, oh, well, that's, you know, this is, is this a reverse or is it just a, just a deep pullback, right? And then you might see, you know, prices start to make new highs or even prices might come down even deeper, right? To something like a 61.8% fib, right? How do you know whether prices, that's just a deep pullback or in fact, that is a reversal, yeah? Um, and so, it's very, very difficult to just tell from price, and you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't have those same questions, right? And so, you know, for your information, price does not move simply for the sake of moving, right? Buyers and sellers within the Forex market or any market, right, any asset class, buyers and sellers don't buy and sell assets in large quantities for no, absolutely no reason. You know, that's <laughs> to, to have a market that just people are speculating on without no sort of um, concept of, of value is, um, you know, is, is, is crazy to me. It's, it doesn't exist. Right. You have to have when you have a market, there has to be uh, value associated with that market and fundamental analysis of any asset uh, class. Uh, is really understanding the current and future potential value of an asset. And so um, what you don't want to do is confuse price with value. Yeah. So assets have varying degrees of cheap or, or, or are varying degrees of cheap, expensive or fair value. Yeah. So, you know, otherwise, if, if price was always indicative of its value, then um, then we would never have an asset that is undervalued or overvalued. We would never have anything that is cheap or expensive because the price is what it is. Um, and, you know, you would just say, well, that's the value, but that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, if uh, if you bought a Ferrari, uh, someone sold you a Ferrari for, for a pound, would you say, well, that's the value of the Ferrari? Um, no, you know intrinsically that the Ferrari has an actual value because, a uh, fundamental value because of the engineering that's gone into it, the materials that's been used on it, etc. So everything has a value. And so... Um, price, yeah, is not always its value, right? So um, don't confuse price with value. And in the Forex world, value is determined 
by interest rates. Yeah, so central bank monetary policy, inflation and GDP, as well as risk sentiment. And this is according to the financial institutions who are doing business in Forex, right? It's not, you know, Leon Rowe saying this. This is, these are the banks that determine the value of um, an exchange rate of a currency, one currency against another, because currencies are trading in pairs. And so, you know, you look at examples like this uh, from, from a bank, this is from MUFG, a uh, Japanese bank, it says the Eurozone rate market has moved to aggressively pair back expectations for further rate hikes. This is the fundamental analysis. So it talks about dovish policy, monetary policy updates for the Bank of Canada, Bank of England and the Fed. The Bank of Canada kicked off the dovish, dovish repricing by pausing their hiking cycle last week. Again, interest rates pausing their hiking cycle. Yeah. So you know, this is Citibank. So, you know, Citibank say on growth, so GDP, the UK lags uh, with the slowest recovery to pre-pandemic levels of real GDP. Future of UK's business model in a post-Brexit world, talking about the effects of Brexit on GDP. This is another bank uh, that talks about, you know, this follows the Bank of England, <coughs> Bank of England in December's meeting, etc., etc. And you can read, you know, them talking about why their targets, you know, within the next 12 months versus the euro, the pound versus the euro would be, you know, 0 0.88 cent uh, um, in, that, in that, at that price or that exchange rate, yeah? And it's not to do with, you know, well, price, we're just speculating on, on price and what we see, that, what they see on the chart. Price does play a role, but the value is what drives price over the medium to long term in the short term price is really kind of driven by uh, or typically driven by um, uh, liquidity and market makers etc and there is speculation but the market is not for you know secondary speculation is secondary the market is really for big businesses like the banks to do business um, and uh, exchange in, in currencies right and so fundamental analysis really is trading alongside the financial institutions if you don't use um, fun, um, fundamental analysis when you're swing trading it's you're basically just flipping a coin and it's probably worse than flipping a coin right because many traders as you know swing trading was all it was cracked up to be and easy as it was you again you wouldn't be watching this video so there is definitely something missing in your trading right and it is fundamental analysis and one of the ways just one of the ways um, that you can um, use uh, I guess the banks and what they release and their fundamental analysis and a bit of a shortcut is to use kind of bank forecasts as as, as a guiding light, yeah? And so uh, many banks uh, use uh, or publish their, uh, their forecasts. They have uh, monthly, quarterly, and these are always constantly updated every, every uh, now and then, of course, because things change. But um, what you want to do is use bank forecasts as your guiding light. And I would say, uh, you know, use probably a one to three month time horizon uh, or maybe, you know, a quarter uh, to, to, to two quarters as your as your um, as your guiding light. Yeah, as your um, as your guide. So um, that way, you know that even if you don't necessarily fully understand the fundamentals, which I highly recommend you do, um, the banks are actually showing you or telling or forecasting what they think is going to happen with that exchange rate. Now, does it mean that, you know, they're going to be 100% right all the time? No, no one has a crystal ball. Um, and these are forecasts. Forecasts are not predictions. There's a difference. Forecasting is not predicting. Predicting deals with uh, absolutes. You know, I predict that tomorrow it's going to rain. And if it doesn't rain, then I'm wrong. Forecasting is what is likely to happen, the probability of something happening, right? We're just forecasting. The weather is a forecast, right? We forecast the weather because the weather can be, you know, is ever changing. And, um, and that's why they call it a forecast. Anyways, so what you want to do is find um, as many as you can um, bank forecasts. Um, don't you know? Go with the with, with the uh, the majority. Don't go with just one or two. Uh, go with maybe if you find ten or fifteen, and then maybe you know maybe ten of those fifteen are saying that they forecast uh, the euro dollar to go higher. For example, then you go with the majority. This isn't 
you know, this is this is opposite to, for example, retail <laughs> trading, where if most of retail are saying that they are short on the euro dollar, then you might want to go long. The banks typically, you know, the, the uh, create the market, and so um, and they're doing business, and so the majority of the banks are typically not wrong, right? They're not wrong. They can be, of course, but they're typically not wrong. So you, will, you know, as a rule of thumb, you want to go with the majority of you know, the forecasts. And so what you want to do is zoom out on a daily or, you know, potentially weekly chart and then look where current price is relative to the forecasts. Yeah. And so uh, this is an example of the euro uh, British pound where um, you have the forecast. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just go back to the uh, euro pound. And we saw a, for example, a forecast on the um, euro pound right here. For the first quarter, uh, we had a um, uh, an, an exchange rate forecast of 0 0.89. In the second quarter, we still have, you know, 0 0.89. And then it looks like it's going maybe, you know, um, about 100 pips higher, right? So we have at least two quarters where we should be at the 0 0.89s at some point. So then... On a price chart, what you want to do is look at where you are relative to the um, to the forecast at the time, right? So if you're at 0 0.89, yeah, at the time of taking the trade, which is right here, yeah, then then you know that you probably don't want to, you know, take that trade anywhere around there. But let's say, for example, you're around the 0 0.87s, then you know that you've got at least uh, a few hundred pips to two and a half uh, to 250 pips you know to the upside yeah if prices come down right because ultimately this is seen as the potential for a bargain if this is seen as the forecast of where prices may be yeah so you want to look at where you are yeah in relation to the current uh, forecasts as well as the upcoming forecasts yeah and so that is really kind of a bit of a, a shortcut way to understand you know whether you're going to be on the right side of the market uh, or not yeah um, but again not you know you, you must I say again but please note that not all bank forecasts, you know, are going to be up to date or relevant. And so it's still important that you understand current fundamental and risk sentiment analysis because data changes and risk events uh, do occur. Right. So there are surprises in the market with data. There are risk events. You know, who could have predicted COVID? Who could have predicted the Ukraine war? Um, there are things that come out. Who could have predicted the Chinese uh, balloon? Right. Um, and whether that has an effect on on um on uh, prices in, in the US dollar. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like it is, but um, you have to have your finger on the pulse. Don't just blindly follow forecasts. Of course, it's a nice guide, it's an aid, it's some confluence, but if you don't understand the reasons why, then you know you might get caught out because if something changes in the market and you're going on um, maybe the forecasts from you know from last week, then you're probably going to get caught out because you're not aware of the changes. The data needs to still support that narrative, and so when swing trading, what you want to do is look at the daily really as your um, as your overall. Um, you know, to look where you are and you're doing your overall analysis. And then swing trading doesn't mean that you, you you know, you can't go down into the lower time frames and look for an entry, whether it's the one hour, whether it's the four hour. If you have custom time frame charts, you can go to six, to the eight, to the 10, etc., and look for your um, your entries. Or if you just want to trade, you know, at the end of the day, because you have a busy day with family, work, etc., then that's fine too, Yeah. The entry doesn't really matter. It only really matters in terms of, you know, your potential um, risk reward, right? And your upside potential. But ultimately, if you've got a good two, three hundred pips to the upside, and maybe you're only risking 50, 60, 70 pips, um, then, um, you know, that's still good risk reward. And so profit targets, you know, to be based on either the bank forecasts coming, you know, true and correct and then being correct or just simply good risk reward, right? You might want to take it off, take some profit off just before you get to, um, you know, the bank forecasts.
right? If you're up uh, a certain amount, chug your stops, however you manage uh, the trade or choose to manage the trade. And so, you know, swing trading Forex successfully with fundamental risk sentiment analysis, you know, the reason why you use fundamental analysis is to recognize when, you know, exchange rates really are cheap, yeah? And to get in, you can get in at the beginning of a potential trend. And also obviously uh, looking at where the banks are uh, forecasting, where price is, and um, your directional bias, which is, you know, first and foremost, what you really want to understand or what your directional bias should be. And uh, also as well, fundamentals gives you understanding, you know, deep fundamentals, not just forecast, but understanding the deep fundamentals um, gives you the confidence to hold trades for longer and you're less likely to take profits early, right? What's the point in taking uh, profits if you know that the fundamentals are in your favor and is likely to move, um, you know, maybe a thousand pips in your direction at some point, right? The, you know, you don't want to look at your account and say, well, I'm up a two to one and then I want to just want to take, you know, profit. That doesn't make any sense when, you know, what you want to do is ride the wave and ride the coattails of the of the banks. Um, and it's very hard to do that without understanding um, the fundamentals. If you're just trading price and hoping and praying, again, you're pretty much in the wilderness. Price is not going to tell you where, where you know, forecast where price is going. Indicators might be right, but they're only right simply because the banks, um, you know, the banks are saying that, you know, prices will go in that direction. And as a result, the indicators are looking at price and if and then price is going higher, excellent. The indicator looks like it's working, but ultimately those people who are technical traders don't understand. In fact, it wasn't the indicator that was right. It was the fact that they were, you know, inadvertently or unknowingly uh, uh, on the side with the uh, with the banks, right? Because the banks create the market and they are the ones that are going to uh, move price in, you know, the direction, whether it's going to trend or whether it's going to range or what is known as a fair value auction. And so also recognize, you know, it's important to recognize when using fundamentals and fundamentals can help you recognize when price is likely to be um, a, a reversal or a, or just a pullback, right? So again, data changes. And so you might get in on a trend not knowing that fundamentally, in fact, um, there's been a total uh, 180 in monetary policy and now it's become a, uh, uh, you know, the, the market is moving against you. So for example, you could be on a, you know, see a really nice trend and then you could be thinking to yourself, oh, I'm going to get in on this uh, this this area here. This is a nice uh, demand zone, but not knowing that, in fact, at this point in time, yeah, maybe the, 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 the European Central Bank, the ECB, have surprised the market, yeah, and said, oh, well, do you know, we're, we're going to start uh, cutting rates instead of hiking rates, right? And then you're thinking to yourself, well, the trend is still up, the trend is still up right and i'm going to buy here when you should really understand that there's no technical level in the world that's going to work against fundamentals none absolutely you might get a small little bounce but ultimately this is now turning into you can have confidence if you understand the fundamentals this is going to turn into a, a total reversal rather than just looking at pullbacks and this is how traders get caught at levels you know day in day out week in week out because they don't understand the uh, the fundamental side of things and the risk sentiment side of things as well. Um, and so also as well, the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you'll make. Swing trading uh, should never be looked at as a bad thing. Just because you take maybe, you know, four or five trades a month doesn't mean you're going to make any less money than someone who takes four, 40 or 50 trades a month, right? It doesn't really matter because somebody can take, you know, 100 trades that month and break even or even lose. You could take, you know, one or two trades that month and have and both of those trades could be winning trades. So the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you'll make. So don't think that swing trading um, is any less profitable than um, something like day trading. And if you want fundamental analysis, mentoring, and a lot more, uh, visit trading180.com. Hope this helps and uh, love to hear your feedback on it. Uh, take care, guys, and uh, speak soon.